You've tuned into the Bellion Podcast for the week of March 14, 2021, episode 183. From that spring forward city by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And straight out of 98226, bleary eyed and fuzzy tailed, I am Chris Powell. On this episode, AJ and I have a heartbreaking scenario for you. It's kind of like a bad choose-your-own-adventure book, if you recall those from your days of youth. We're going to talk about a technology situation and what would we do, maybe what would you do, depending. Join us in the conversation next on the Bellingham Podcast. Well, Chris, spring is definitely here as it's raining down and we spring forward. How are we doing? Uh, not bad. I always don't mind losing an hour of sleep if I get a little bit more daylight in my day. And uh, yeah, I'm a little cranky from the lack of uh, additional sleep, but I'll get my beauty sleep in the near future. How about yourself? How are you doing? Oh, I'm reaching down and grabbing my uh, clean canteen and having my second cup of coffee, Chris. So oh, I'm doing all right. All righty. Let's get caffeinated. Let's talk about some stuff. How about we do some housekeeping to get the podcast all spiffed up fresh and clean? Yeah. So uh, thanks for everyone for, for tuning in. Last week, we had a station break just because it's been five years, Chris. Yeah, you know, on the punch card of podcasts, we could take a break every now and then. Yes. So uh, last week, um, I was do- uh, polishing up a few uh, few things just for the logistics of the show and stuff. And we've got uh, everything should be updated in your podcast app of choice, all of our new art. And we got some other stuff in the works coming, coming soon. Uh, one thing I want to also throw out to the uh, Bellingham uh, podcast fam is uh, we, we've kind of pivoted our, our official hashtag on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the whatever you may hashtag away at. On the Moshal Cedia. Sure, that. <laughs> well, I like that, Moshal Cedia. Yeah, I don't Pat mess pending. around. So, uh, there, there's been, so we, for a long time, uh, hashtag Beham podcast is usually what most people tag us on. Um, there's been, so there, as we did uh, quite some episodes back, there's a few different Bellinghams in, uh, the world, uh, here in the United States and in the UK and uh, elsewhere. Well, I believe there is a Bellingham or a Birmingham or some other B ham in the great state of Alabama right now. I would wager Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. And so they've, they've been, I believe there is a new radio station that is up in that town or wherever that town may be. Uh, and they have been hitting that hashtag hard. Why not? So, which is fine. So, uh, I, I just want to throw out that uh, hashtag Bellingham podcast. If you want to hashtag us on the socials um, or motions, if you ask Chris Powell um, and uh, just want to throw that out. Um, thanks to everyone who supports the show, yeah. you know, promoting us that way or, or, you know, whether it's a watch or a piece of tech and you want to hashtag Bellingham podcast. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, the other thing I want to throw out is a, a, a shout out and also a teaser um, so our mate across the pond, uh, Dan over at, uh, he's at timely, uh, timely underscore moments on Instagram, but he is also the owner, proprietor and podcaster of the Zulu time podcast. Yes, indeed. And, um, he's doing some really cool stuff and whether you're in the watch fam or not, uh, you should definitely take a listen to his show. Uh, you know, right now he's doing a lot of collectors of in the watch fam, normal people and why they collect. And remember his show is r- mostly around military watches, but, uh, and the, also if you ever wanted to know history, um, he's got several episodes on like different historical references of why, like the, the dirty dozen watches or why the, the, the watches of world war two are the way that they're designed. So like if you're in a design, um, uh, type of mode, take a listen to those, those episodes. But what's really cool is here's, here's a gentleman who is looking to give back. And so he has these really great, he's probably the coolest swag out of all podcast land right now. And he's got patches. He's got like the Mark one and Mark two of patches. He has two different versions. The, the Mark two is what I brought over the other day with the gloom, like Uh it glows. Oh yeah. So he has said, um, the only way that you can get a patch is if you're on the show or a friend of the show. Um, which is why we've got him and stuff. And a lot of people want to support him in his, his, his show. And he doesn't want to take away from the maker of those patches. So Pagoda patches also based out of the UK is who he's partnered with to make those patches. And they're establishing what they're calling a drop. So on March 31st, there will be a batch, a special edition, uh, drop of 30 patches, um, in partnership with Pagoda Patches and the Zulu Time podcast. What is awesome is that they're doing the drop will support fundage to a charity. Okay. So if you want to support not only 
a podcast and a maker, but also a charity. Now, their, their charities are going to be over in the UK. Um, I, uh, I'll probably have a link in the show notes of the charities that they're going to be pointing out. Um, they're service-oriented charities, obviously in the vein of, of UK military. But take a look at it. Um, and I believe the drop, like I said, March 31st should be when the drop happens. So if you want us to do that support, but also stay tuned, uh, in April, uh, there's also another drop that I'm not at liberty to say, I believe the, the ministry of defense would come after me, Chris, if I were to go into other great detail. There's many people in this world that I do not want to mess with. The Ministry of Defense over across the <laughs> pond is definitely one of them. AJ, keep your trap shut. I believe James Bond himself would show up on my doorstep. But no, in April, I believe the Zulu Time Podcast has another partner that is going to help support a U.S.-based charity. Okay, that's to come great. That. We're, just stop right there. En- enough yeah. of the potential spoilers. Let's not get in trouble. Yes. yes. Oh, uh, Ethan Hunt's texting me. I should probably get that text before it self Would you put your phone and do not disturb? <laughs> We're recording a show here. Okay, Chris, you're taking the lead on this one. What is this game reset that we are doing today? on the show so i had an opportunity to you know just uh, have some quiet thoughts and i and i thought about a scenario that may occur and both aj and i hope this doesn't happen to any of the four of you that are listening to this show right now (laughs) but here's a heartbreaking scenario your residence whether it's an apartment a duplex a home whatever have you a room that you're sharing with roommates this residence that you live in and all of your tech possessions and a whole lot of your other stuff are destroyed in a fire Poof. or destroyed in a flood whoosh or whoosh. <laughs> or in an earthquake rumble uh or in a robbery heaven forbid you know, like risky business where you come in and the help complete uh residence is blanked out um you name it whatever kind of tragedy that might occur however You are given a sizable settlement check from the insurance company because you are smart enough to have either renters or home insurance uh, in cases of tragedies like this. So as you're rebuilding your 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 residence, your existence, uh, your life, what technology would you purchase if you had to do it all over again? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So here's where uh, for episode 183 we're going to go TikTok, and I'll I'll be the. Yes. I, am I the tick this time? You're the tick. I'm the tick. All right. So I actually have three uh, answers to that scenario. The first one is going to be in this number one tick is going to be for those of you who are Apple uh, aficionados. aficionados or device owners. So you got to have a, a phone. And, and according to this, your phone would be... Uh, poof or melted uh, as a result of this or theft i mean iphone's theftery you know is 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 well known and as we're thinking practically uh for the next few years or so you know you can always get the latest newest shiny if that's how you want to spend your insurance settlement check fair enough but i gotta shoot straight with you the iphone se has a fairly sizable screen second gen the second gen of 2020 uh, it is not the latest. It'll be there for you. It's rock solid, and uh, it does the job. And I think for an iPhone SE, very uh, wise type purchase for your mobile device. Also, uh, if you're also in the Apple camp, I'd probably recommend, even though it's new-ish, uh, I would recommend getting the MacBook Air M1, which is this. The Air. The MacBook Air. Okay. Not the Pro. Okay. Uh for those of you that may be professional photographers like my podcast <laughs> partner in crime or video editors like our dear friend Darren. What's up, Darren? Yo, uh, I think that would be more appropriate. However, I'm thinking of the, I don't know, 95% bell curve of the rest of us <laughs> that don't have the skill. We need to be able to work with our device, uh, do the bare essentials of email, web, and office productivity. Uh, the M1... It will destroy most other uh, competitors yeah. and all you tech apologists and all you other freaks out there. Uh, Drink. <laughs> yeah. Find me, come at me, whatever. I don't care. Anyway, for the Apple folks out there, I think an, a MacBook Air M1, it's around a G ish, yeah. ish, nicely equipped. Yeah. Uh, but I think a phone and a, a laptop would probably suffice a whole lot of what you're looking for. Uh, that would be the recommendation on the Apple camp talk. So I'm going to go, uh, my talk is the, the actual domicile. So on the show, I've said time and time again, I dabbled in the whole smart home sphere 
And I've gone through lots of different phases doing the whole Google uh, Home and using that ecosystem and Thread via Nest and such. So recently I had the um, I had the first or second gen version of the Nest Protects. So in said Fire, Foosh and Rumble and whatever, let's say I don't think anybody would steal smart home stuff. Well, they might rip it off the wall because they want the actual possession to be able to hawk at a pawn shop to get fundage for it or hawk on Craigslist. Yeah, maybe. I um, mean, how, how secure is a Nest? I don't have one, but a Nest thermostat, can you just un- yeah, you can, un- you can pop it? it. Yeah, it, it'll pop off. But I mean, but let's say you had to retool because um, th- times have changed greatly and the ecosystem of home automation, let's just call it that because I, I don't really want to call it a smart home um, just because... I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really care for that. But home automation and making effective and easy home automation. You know, LifeX bulbs for for lighting and stuff. They were like the only game in town. There are a plethora. Yep. Um, you can go up on any. I'm not even going to say the Zon. Like you can go down to Home Depot yep. now, yep. or Lowe's, or a hardware sales probably here Bellingham, mm-hmm. and probably pick up a Wi-Fi connected bulb with an app that actually functions. I recently did this for my sister-in-law. She really liked coming visiting and we, you know, my son loves playing with the the Wi-Fi lights, yes. making pretty colors. Oh yeah. And so she was very curious in the sphere. Um and so I hooked her up with uh, a very affordable alternative and now I think her entire flat now has them. You know, LifeX bulbs are not cheap they're nope. i think like 50 or 60 bucks a bulb you can now get something very comparably equipped in the 10 or if not 20 dollars a bulb and andrew jackson's your your homie uh when you're going for a smart led bulb i've already uh gone other areas we didn't talk about that in the show notes but we won't uh go too off rails but no. yes as you're replacing your smart home yeah so nice. so so replacing it like more and more i've found out and i i was in the nest camp early on uh with a nest thermostat largely because of the thread like that was the only real protocol unless you were doing um the old protocols like zigbee and all these other ones i dabbled in with a, a hub back in the day so that i could use those old devices and really I kind of forego. I, I I sold that that hub because I'd rather do a more contemporary Wi-Fi based system, um, and so retooling, moving forward, I don't know if I would do that again, Chris. Like. Um, the Nest, although very good looking in design and accessible from your phone, phone and such, yep. I would probably just go with whatever's like, I believe Nest even has like a more affordable option where it's a monochrome display. You don't have to have colors. I'd probably go that route. I'd probably go quote lower end in it because the functions that I need is okay. It's a hot day or a cold day. Can I fire off my, my um, air conditioning or, or my, my heating unit? Um, I don't really use the am I am I at home or am I away optimization stuff um, largely because I just do it manually. And you're kind of home most of the time in this current era. Yeah, that's the other thing that kind of dawned on me, Chris, is like, you know, this was also I, I also tooled my house in an era where, you know, the nine to five and stuff. And now moving forward, even with covid, that's the reason why I wanted to put it on the list is rethinking moving forward this game reset motif it may not just be a fire. It may just be life has occurred, as yes. we say on the show, because of COVID. And that is now your factory reset. So, I mean, I've, I've full disclosure, I used to be an ambassador for LifeX bulbs. That said, you know, I would probably not go with them if I had to retool, although they do make a great bulb for other reasons. The Nest, I'd probably go the lower end Nest, as long as it can dynamically change things so that you don't have to, or just can connect connect by a, a a smart device great that's all you really need there is for a garage door opener there's actually wi-fi garage door openers as opposed to the old push button styles i might go with one of those but again i wouldn't have it automated like mm-hmm. it wouldn't detect my my presence and do it automatically i just want it there for convenience sure and also for security yep. you know for instance if i were to go out of town and i need my you know neighbor to you know get a package that accidentally got you know delivered early at my door hey chris i'm going to open up the garage door just put it in the garage for me okay you don't have to worry about lending a key to somebody yeah. now notice i do not say a smart lock in my retooling i'm still a fan of the old like give me an old school key because there are other mechanisms like a smart garage door opener i can give access in other ways for other reasons and that's kind of the route that i would go in the smart home is not looking high end anymore but looking at the more affordable end because here's the thing that burned me kind of is these smart home devices or home automation devices 
just like we say on the show, they don't last forever. The Nest Protects, I had the first or second generation Nest Protect, which is their smart um, fire alarms. I love them. I think what they supply in function and in safety is a big deal for a home. There are other contenders now. Honeywell has one, etc. But the thing about it is they, like any smart, uh, uh, fire detector, smoke alarm, and carbon monoxide detector, the sensors go out. E-waste, Chris. Uh, yeah. So my both of them went out at the same time. They are not inexpensive. They're about $300. Oh, yeah. And I, I did a teardown. Um, and uh, I haven't posted on my blog yet. I'm working on something. But I'm appalled at the fact that in today's day and age, you know, Tony Fidel's original design and stuff and, and, and effectiveness of, of technology, notwithstanding, you know, I, I find it appalling now that Nest is owned by Google, that Google has not looked to their own, you know, phone blocks initiative that they killed back in the day. Project Aura. Yeah, that Project Aura. With smart, smart home devices, why not buy just a new carbon monoxide filter yeah. or detector, etc.? We put air filters in our HVAC units. Why can our... our you know, home automation units not be able to do the same? That's a great question. I'm sure that the big uh, tech companies who of whom I have a lot of disdain for aren't thinking about uh, sustainability and of uh, the landfills. They want you to buy the entire product over right. again instead of a little snippet of it that you can plug in and replace, which would not improve their bottom line. But that's just me because I don't know what I'm talking about. No, but so anyway, in retooling, that would, that's what I would say about it. There's only, there's only one other thing I missed out of that home automation thing, and that is that I would automate my home to play our podcast on Camry 102.3 FM. Yeah, uh, and they're voice commanded uh, all over the internet at kmre.org, and they're kind enough, if you ask them uh, politely enough, on Saturdays at 3 p.m., they will play our show. Hey, KMRE. <laughs> play the Bellingham podcast. If you do that Saturdays at three on 102.3 FM, they'll actually play our show. It's great. It's a wonderful thing. Okay, Tick, back to you. What's right, your so second point? I'm thinking back. Uh, so let's talk about the Apple uh, folks. Now I want to talk about those who might have Gmail accounts or Google folks and such like that. Now I'm purposely not uh, talking about Windows folks because I still pray for you on a regular basis. But the thing is, if you're using a Windows 10 operating system, what are you using it for? Oh, I'm checking my email. I'm using a Chrome browser because friends will, friends use Microsoft Edge. And I'm using Google Docs because it's free and other okay. things like that. So transitive authority, A plus B plus C equals duh. Uh, why are you still using a Windows computer that you got to be uh, keeping an antivirus program up to speed, a malware program up to speed and license because we don't use free stuff for malware checkers. Um, why not get a Chromebook, which, you know, you've got a, a really sizable insurance uh, payoff th th that you have available. Use what you only need. You get a, you get a Lenovo Chromebook duet and by uh, thinking, you know, I'm a fan of Lenovo. I like, I, I've, I've owned uh, their uh, laptops uh, currently, I'm a current owner of some of them. I like how they have them constructed. Um, we have we actually have a Lenovo Chromebook in the house. Therefore, I went first. Mm. And uh, for for my wife, who likes using uh, Google Chrome, is used to that browser. It works just dandy. Um, the Duet por portion, and no, this isn't the the device they have in the school districts with that hinge that spins the thing around that the kids will break after 37 hours of use. This is actually yeah. a detachable monitor if you screen if you will that can turn into the tablet so in effect you're getting kind of two devices for the price of one it's running that lightweight chrome os you get your gmail you get your google docs you get your drive you get you, oodles of battery life and battery life is also because because it's a lightweight operating system that doesn't have a whole lot of things running in the background hi microsoft and it is a lot more affordable in some cases that would be something that as you are putting the pieces back together of your life. That would be a great way to just uh, get access to the internet. Yeah. Now, sure, it won't be able to edit video cleanly. Sure. Or or audio or things like that. But that's that. not who we're addressing. We're talking the the normal user who perhaps has that PC that they've been keeping in their flat yep. house, whatever, and now it's gone. Yep. And so for those who do have the Gmail account, I would imagine you are an Android phone user. Along those lines, I would recommend that if you were to replace your phone, which went poof, whoosh, or gblunk uh, from the earthquake, or swipe, uh, there's a company called OnePlus 
who I'm a fan of. Uh, for a brief time, I owned an Android phone from OnePlus. I would get the 7T version. The, the numbers, T is in Tom. The T is in terrific. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what what I like about OnePlus is that they have a, a fabulous hardware spec they do. in their devices, and they run Oxygen OS, which is a fork. I'm enunciating because I don't want the explicit tag Wait, on our show. this is the end of the show yet. Oh. Oh, sorry, no, hang eyes. on, hang eyes. on. It's a fork of the Android operating system that is a little cleaner than what the stock, what what some phone companies would have on their Android phone. Got a link to both of these devices in the show notes. And for the love of exploding AEW wrestling rings, uh, drink. drink. Yeah, that's a whole other topic in itself. What's uh, up, Jim Cornette? <laughs> yeah. Uh, check out OnePlus if you were to up, if you want to upgrade your Android phone as opposed to what your phone provider your mobile carrier may try to uh s- heartily suggest to you mm-hmm. by someone who's there to sell product as opposed to what you really want uh and also you know check out the chromebook it's a really lightweight thing we've talked about it for i don't know maybe 20 out of the 183 <laughs> episodes yeah about their benefits uh talk so f- because i am the pro photog i'm going to point out something that maliciously or uh you know through acts of different natural environments should your camera that you probably forgot or during this covid time you busted out because you perhaps read a blog post by yours truly and you're using it for your camera setup for those teams zooms etc calls what blog would that be again uh, AJ AJ Barsay. Barsay. Yeah, that's or analog explorer.com oh of course yes so let's say you have that camera and I've, I've run into this a lot during the pandemic you know there's old nikons out there there's old canon or even more contemporary uh, Sony's and stuff. And let's say they get swiped or it's gone. What would, what would you retool? Now, bear in mind, you know, I, I, I am a pro photog. This is notwithstanding. I'm just talking about a general user. And more and more, I've pointed people towards Fuji. Mm. Um, the, the one camera that I, like, I absolutely love, I've used older versions of it. There is the uh, X100V. And the X100V is a fixed lens. It's a 35 millimeter field of, of view. But because it's a crop sensor, it's an APS-C sensor, uh, I can't do my math on top of my head. I think it's like a 20, uh, 18 or 28 millimeter to get you that field of view. But it's a fixed lens camera, weather sealed, so you can take it out in the Pacific Northwest, backed by a sensor that is beautiful. And usually they're about you know $1,200 or so, but it it is the perfect travel family camera. You can't zoom on it or whatever, but it's pocketable. You could probably hook it up as your webcam, like I've I've written about in, in in my my blog. But it for me more and more, even as a pro photog, when I travel, I travel with a fixed lens camera now most of the time, unless I am working as a pro. And for me, I like the thirty five millimeter field of view. Now, that the the replacement, the reason why I'm throwing this out on first is the X. 100 V because again, it's about $1,200. If you're a pro and let's say somebody came in and swiped everything. Okay. And let's say you weren't going to have to work as a pro anymore. Like let's say I, I bowed out Chris, I would probably look at the uh, Leica Q2 and I know that's probably going to raise a lot of eyebrows. Leica. Oh my goodness. Leica means price. Right. Um, now this may not be specifically for me. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on a Q2, but it is the comparable, um, equivalent to one of the cameras I do own, which is an RX1R Mark II, uh, made by Sony. It again is a fixed lens, 28 millimeter field of view. So if you're used to shooting on an iPhone, imagine a pro level full frame camera that shoots the same field of view as your Radicorn iPhone. Hmm. Um, they're usually priced around five grand. So again, depends on what that payout of your, your, your insurance is, but I would look at a a fixed lens camera as opposed to a zoom camera. Most people, um, are used to it these days with the smartphones as they are. Usually it's one lens, unless you have an iPhone or Samsung or the Google with the multiple lenses stuff, but nine times out of 10, if you know, most people are, are shooting to what they're used to. And that is usually the field of view that their, their, their smartphone gives them. Um, it's less kit. You don't have that decision fatigue of, Oh, do I need to pack my 24 to to 105 F four constant lens? Nah, if you're, if you're a family person, you're going to want to turn it on, take a photo because that's what matters. Says the analog explorer. Capture that moment. Tick. So 
uh, at, this is my third uh, selection of how to spend that insurance check on technology. We've got the Apple camp and we've got the Google camp covered at least. Now we've got Chris's camp. And this is the tinfoil hat camp where everybody's <laughs> paranoid about people stealing everyone else's information. So <laughs> for, the, for the, what, 0.01% of <laughs> the listens. people that would listen to the show, um, I, if, I, if this actually happened to me, I would be receiving the insurance money and, uh, you know, and be mindful. I'd probably get a Google Pixel 4 XL. S- stop right there. Chris, it's a Google phone. You say you don't like Google and all that the privacy and security. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold I take that Google Pixel X- 4 XL, not the 4A, the 4, uh, and I load Graphene OS on there, which is a privacy forward operating system, not Oxygen OS, which still has telemetry going back to the Google mother- mothership. You take the hardware specs of the Google Pixel, yeah. which is awesome, and you run Graphene OS. Well, what, what about OnePlus? Unfortunately, at the time of this recording, Graphene OS, which I'm a big fan of, is not available to be loaded onto OnePlus 7Ts. If I did this, I would not be able to load up my OnePlus phone yeah. <laughs> to make a phone call. I that believe make... that is called a brick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what the kids are calling it. So that's my mobile device about what I would get. And then from a, another bigger device, a desktop, laptop, tablet standpoint, um, I have really found that a, a lot of my work can be accomplished in the Linux operating system. And no, I'm not in that uh, community where everyone's a totally nerd out and things like that. It just works for me. Uh, there is a company out there called System76, which is another privacy-focused uh, website. And they have what's called a Lemur, yes, the name of the animal, animal uh, System76 Lemur Pro, which is a, like a 14-inch screen laptop that has a core boot, BIOS, all the trimmings on a privacy security S- sesame seed bun. Uh, that would be what I'd get. It would probably be around the $1,500 range, and that's not something I recommend for everybody because it will not synchronize your photos to your laptop. It won't let you post to Instagram uh, and everything is like that. And the voice inflection that I'm using right now is just what a whole lot of people are wanting. But there are some people that are like, all right, what does this knucklehead actually Actually, want? Yeah. Um, And so I I really want to go make it difficult for people to try to find me. (laughs) You know, Uh, if you have a problem, and no one else can help. And if you can find me, maybe you can hire Chris Powell. Uh, that is something that I would probably do uh, for my camp if that happened to me. All right, for the final talk, hit it. So for me, this is uh, I, the, the watches. So like, let's say somebody came in and stole my watch box. Yep. And that would be tragic, like f- for me, for not because of the, the cost, but because the memories I have attached to what is in that watch box. And I'm, I got this for two camps because I am currently double wristing, as you can see, for the smart. But they can't see because you've got your cool little uh, patina in progress uh, watch. Yeah, the, the Baltic Aquascaf bronze on a, oh, a shout out to RSM watch straps. And then I've got the uh, the Garmin Instinct because I'm doing some biohacking tracking. Uh, Hence the stuff. double wristing. Yes. Please continue. So for those that may have a smart watch at home and have the analog watches, this is you know, one of those things where in the watch fam, it's the, the exit watch th- or I'm not really going to go into that. But for me, if everything was gone for my watches and I had to retool with a smart watch for the smart watch camp and the mechanical watch camp, you have to bear in mind, most of my collection is uh, not most of my question, but a good chunk of my small collection, the watches that are in there, I built. So for me, the, the one watch that I would want to rebuild may not necessarily be the PNW001. It would actually be the SKX031 that I built, which became my daddy duty, my real honest to gosh, daddy duty watch. It's the, the watch that's been on the most mountains with me. It's been the watch that um, has seen the most wrist time with my son. And I also had the case back customly engraved with a uh, design that I made. It's a daddy duty, it's a daddy duty, double duty, daily driver, destination <laughs> daring watch. Yeah. Uh, Hoorah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a lot of Ds. Um, I would want to suss the parts out again and rebuild that, get the case back re-engraved and wear it again. Um, with the only thing I would change on it would be I would put a 12 hour bezel as opposed to a full grade A bezel on it. For the smart watch folks out there. Now bear in mind, um, I only own one quote smart watch, but I've worked and used and serviced many of them from Samsung, from Apple watches from the first gen forward. So I've got a fairly good understanding of what they are and who they're applied to. Me, because I am more active 
I really, I've really fallen in love and I'm quite smitten with this Garmin Instinct. Um, if it was uh, taken or destroyed, I would get the solar one immediately. Like I would just the same one, solar. I think for the Pacific Northwest, or if you're a uh, active aficionado, it is the end all be all watch, and the solar one would just make it nth more because it's charged by the sun. I wouldn't have to worry about charging it every week or two. Yes. Um, that's my two things I would do for the watch fam side of things. But the, but the thing with the Garmin watch, how does that handle, uh, when it comes into contact with forks? You know, uh, it doesn't have a tuning fork, but, uh, I, I think it would, I think it would survive. Well, okay. With that being said, we should probably stick a fork in this, uh, worst case scenario show and wrap it. That wraps up for this Cascadian subduction zone edition of the Bellingham podcast. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Thank you again so much for listening to us, uh, rating us, reviewing us wherever you like to get our podcast. Remember if you are in the Bellingham area, even in this, uh, drastic time and the zombie apocalypse is upon us you might be listening to us on camry 102.3 fm they are community powered in all weather conditions and all life conditions and they're streaming worldwide on your internet browser whatever that may be on kmre.org and on that note i hope that is not a planet killer asteroid coming down upon us i'm aj marseille <laughs> and i'm chris powell no it's not it's just an actual seagull flying by uh thanks once again for joining us on the bellingham podcast <laughs> That, that was a wor- worst case scenario that actually had some life to it. Yeah, it's yeah. the end of the world as we know it. Uh, it. In that case, it would be like the the smart device world. But I feel fine. Uh, I feel fine too.